Hello and welcome to our midweek devotion. My name is Michael Rogers and I'm our student pastor and I'm thankful that you decided to tune in today. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, what happened directly after Easter, which is timely for us. So I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 24. Now the whole passage will be verses 13 through uh, 35 and then some verses that are following. So I encourage you to read that on your own and, and, uh, and check that out so you can get the full scope of what's going on. But I'm going to start reading in verse 13 and just read a little bit to kind of set the stage. It says that that very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? So basically what's going on, you've got uh, this, this disciple of Jesus named Cleopas who's traveling along and he's got a companion who is not named, but some people believe that it's, that it's possibly his wife uh, because, because she is referenced as the wife of Cleopas in other places. And so it may be, may be husband and wife that are traveling along. They're on the way to Emmaus, uh, heading away from Jerusalem, and they're sad and they're bummed and they're talking about everything that's just gone on. You know, their, uh, their Lord, uh, Jesus, who is died and and, and uh, everything was coming to an end at least that's what they thought and they weren't sure of uh, of everything that had that had been taking place since then they didn't know that Jesus had raised from the dead they didn't know that everything was right on track with what God had planned the whole time so at this point they're just sad and Jesus appears but they don't recognize him they just know that somebody's there and they ask hey guys what's going on and, uh, and Cleopas, he's like, he kind of, I just kind of get the picture that he looks at him sort of dumbfounded and is like, have you been living under a rock? And Jesus was probably like, well, funny you mention that, but that's beside the point. He's going on and he just asked them, what are you talking about? What's going on? And so from there, if you were to read, you would see that, that Cleopas really, uh, he, he lays out the story of Jesus, uh, you know, and, and, and what had happened to him just in a, in a few sentences. Uh, but he calls him a mighty prophet. And then he talks about how he had been, how he had been crucified. And, uh, and so they go on and, um, and eventually uh, they end up uh, coming near to their house. And so it's getting late. They invite Jesus to come in and, and stay with them and eat with them. And so they eat together. Okay. And after all this has taken place, then they realize who it is that they're, who it is that they're speaking with. Um, it says, um, let me, uh, let me make sure that I read that for you. It says in verse 30, when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. So, so he, he, he shows up, they don't know who he is. They, they talk with him, have dialogue with him, invite him in to eat. He eats with them and then they realize who he is. And then he vanishes out of sight. Okay, so, so if you were to move on beyond that, then you would see where they go and they tell the disciples, the other disciples, what has just happened, okay? And then Jesus appears to them there. So Jesus, I, I just kind of feel like maybe now that, that things have happened the way that they have, he's feeling a little more freedom and uh, flexibility to, uh, to flex his God muscles and just sort of appear and disappear at, at will. Uh, and, and I love that, you know, kind of a beam me in Scotty and beam me up Scotty, anyway. I probably shouldn't have said that. But moving on, let's talk about some of the things that we learned from this passage. First of all, we see that the disciples are sad. Their hopes and their dreams um, have been placed on certain things that, that have not come to pass. Now, they rightly loved Jesus, but they didn't have their hopes placed in the right uh, in the right way. They didn't understand fully what he was about. And we've got to grant them grace because we understand the full story uh, being after the fact. But they, as they were living through it, you know, we would have been in their shoes as well, being very confused and, and not knowing uh, what, what all was going on. But, uh, but we can look and see that, that there are a lot of times where we place our hopes and our dreams in the wrong place. We do the same thing. And the road to Emmaus can be littered with lots of uh, broken, broken and shattered 
hopes and dreams. And so, um, and so we, we would do well to look at things that we have placed great hope uh, and faith in that have not panned out the way that we thought that they would and, and try to determine, you know, have we placed those hopes and that faith in the wrong place? Um, next, we see that they didn't recognize Jesus, okay? The problem wasn't that they didn't see him. You know, he was right there. He appeared to them. He's talking with them. They, they saw him, but they didn't recognize who he was. Now, I think Jesus was keeping keeping that uh, from them at that point in time, but we would still do well to ask ourselves, have there been time where we, times when we have encountered Christ, but we haven't recognized him, where we've seen God at work, but we haven't, uh, we haven't really had our eyes opened to what he was really doing. You know, we always need to be looking for the places where God is at work so that we can join him in that and making sure that we are walking with Christ and not in a direction on our own. I love that as they're, as they're speaking, you know, in, throughout the account, and I really want you to, to read that on your own, but as Jesus is speaking with them, he's speaking to them just straight from Scripture. You know, that's what he's walking through. He is, he is working through, through all of Scripture, and he's revealing himself through Scripture. So he didn't pick and choose individual verses here and there, although, you know, proof text and, and chapter and verse, that's good and that's important, and we should know places that we can go to in Scripture that that will that will you know bolster our faith but but I think it's it's very important and Jesus he really seems to highlight this that that seeing the whole of scripture is so crucially important for us um, and Jesus so so he points to himself as the Messiah by looking through their scripture which we would call the Old Testament looking through the through the whole of scripture uh, last night when I was meeting online with my small group, that's something that we were talking about was just how, how thankful we are that, um, that that's something that, uh, that our churches today seem to put more emphasis on than perhaps they did when I was a kid. Um, I don't think that people left it out on purpose. It's just not something that, that people were really thinking about, that Jesus has always been a part from creation right on through to revelation and, and now. Uh, he, was, he was always revealing himself, that he, was, he is the theme of scripture. And I'm thankful that curriculum writers and, and pastors and teachers are really focusing on that. And I think that, that we need to do that as well, okay? And so, and so we should work through scripture, the whole of scripture in a systematic way, looking for the redemptive narrative throughout the whole thing. In verse 45, you know, moving on to, into the, to the next scene where uh, Cleopas and, uh, and his companion are with the disciples. In verse 45, it says this, after Jesus appears to them, it says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. I think that is so, so crucial. You know, we can read God's word and we can um, we can fill our mind uh, we can fill our uh, our knowledge banks with with lots of information but what we really need is for Christ to to open our minds to the truth of Scripture so that we can see the gospel thread throughout all of it and so when we read the Bible we should ask God to open our mind and open our heart to the truth of Scripture we need to view everything that we read through the lens of the cross and the resurrection and see that his redemption redemptive work was not plan B. It wasn't a backup plan, but rather it was something that God has been doing since the very beginning to point towards his own glory. So my, uh, my hope for you is that you will join me in reading through scripture and that every time we sit down to study God's word, that we would ask Christ to open our minds and our hearts to the truth of what he is saying to us through his written word. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for um, just for for this really special passage of scripture that Luke has recorded for us, this uh, this account where uh, where Cleopas uh, and his companion are just walking along and they're feeling down, they're feeling sad because things haven't gone the way they thought they would. Uh, but then you appeared to them, you met them at their point of need, and you pointed them to who you truly were. God, I thank you that you did that then, and that you do that now. I thank you that just as later you appear to the disciples and and open their minds to the truth of scripture. God, we thank you that you do that now for us as your disciples in the year 2020. And God, I pray that, um, that every time we open your word, God, that we would just pause for a moment and just, uh, just slow down enough 
so that we're reading not to, to finish the book, but we're reading so that your word can soak into us and we can really see uh, and know and hear from you during our time um, in your word. And God, I pray that as we, uh, as we study your word, that it will transform our hearts and our minds and our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.